Ever wondered what makes a good PCB layout? Well, you're in the right place. Today, we're delving into the world of electronics, exploring the art and science behind a successful printed circuit board, or PCB layout. We'll guide you through the top 10 guidelines that will ensure your PCB layout is efficient, effective, and error-free. From the placement of sensitive components to the integrity of your signals, these tips will provide invaluable insights for your electronics projects. Are you ready to learn the secrets behind a successful PCB layout? Let's dive in. Starting off with number 10, keep sensitive components away from high noise circuits. In the electronics world, noise is an unwanted disturbance in an electrical signal. It's like the static you hear in a radio when the signal is weak, or the snow you see on an old television screen. This noise can have a profound impact on the performance of sensitive components. For instance, it can cause a sensor to misread signals, or a microcontroller to misinterpret data. Therefore, it's vital to strategically place these sensitive components away from high noise circuits in your PCB layout. Think of it as social distancing for your components. The further away they are from the noise, the less likely they are to be affected by it. This simple step can drastically improve the performance and reliability of your PCB. Remember, a little distance can make a huge difference in your PCB design. Moving on to guideline number 9, use of ground planes. Ground planes are like the unsung heroes of a PCB layout. They play a crucial role in reducing noise, improving signal integrity, and providing a return path for currents. Imagine a city without roads. Just like roads direct traffic, ground planes direct electrical currents. They serve as a common reference point for all components, which is why their use is essential in every PCB design. Ground planes can be either on the top, bottom, or middle layers of a PCB, depending on the design requirements. They help to reduce electromagnetic interference and enhance the overall performance of the circuit. So it's not just about placing components and connecting traces. A good PCB layout also considers the effective use of ground planes. Therefore, always remember, a good ground plane is like a solid foundation for your PCB layout. Next up, guideline number eight, prioritize power distribution. Let's dive into the heart of your PCB layout, the power distribution. Imagine the power distribution as the circulatory system of your PCB, carrying vital energy to every component. Prioritizing the layout of this system is crucial to ensure that each component receives the power it requires to function optimally. So, how do we do this? First, consider the power needs of your components. High power components should be placed near the power source, minimizing the length of power delivery routes. This reduces the potential for power loss and increases efficiency. Secondly, power and ground planes should be adjacent, creating a low impedance path. This reduces noise and improves performance. Lastly, remember to use decoupling capacitors effectively. They are critical to the stability of your power supply, smoothing out voltage spikes and drops. Remember, power distribution is the lifeblood of your PCB. Never overlook it. Coming in at number seven, use decoupling capacitors. In the world of electronics, power stability is paramount and that's where decoupling capacitors strut their stuff. These small but mighty components are like the unsung heroes of the PCB layout. Imagine a busy city, that's your circuit. Now, think of decoupling capacitors as shock absorbers in a car, smoothing out the bumps and jolts of the road. They do the same for your circuit, absorbing voltage spikes and reducing noise. By placing decoupling capacitors near IC chips, they help maintain power stability by providing a local power source for the ICs to draw upon, reducing the demand on power supply lines. This results in a smoother, less noisy operation of the circuit. When you look at a circuit board, you might not even notice these tiny components. But take them out, and you'd see a world of difference in performance. Decoupling capacitors, small components with a big impact. Halfway there with guideline number six, traces routing. Just as a well-planned road system is essential for smooth traffic flow, the same holds true for the traces on your PCB. These little pathways are the lifelines of your circuit, carrying signals from one component to another. But here's the catch. If not routed properly, these traces can become sources of signal interference, leading to poor circuit performance or even failure. Think of it as a highway with no proper lanes or traffic rules. Chaos, right? So, how do we avoid this? By routing traces in straight lines or 45 degree angles where possible and keeping them as short and direct as possible. This reduces the chance of signal interference and crosstalk. 
Also, remember to separate analog and digital traces to avoid noise contamination. In essence, proper traces routing is like a good roadmap. It leads you to your destination without any hiccups. Traces routing, the roadmap to a successful PCB layout. Moving forward to guideline number five, thermal management. When it comes to PCB design, managing heat is a crucial aspect that too often gets overlooked. Heat can be a silent killer for electronics. High temperatures can lead to component failure and reduce the lifespan of your design. So, how do we mitigate this? First, consider the placement of heat generating components. Distribute them evenly across the PCB to avoid hotspots. Second, make use of thermal VS. These are great for conducting heat away from the components and spreading it across the board. Also, don't forget about the role of materials. Copper, for instance, is an excellent thermal conductor and can be used to draw heat away from components. Lastly, consider incorporating heat sinks or cooling fans if your design generates a significant amount of heat. Remember, the goal is to keep everything running cool and efficient. Good thermal management, a cool solution for a hot problem. Scene script, coming in at number four, component placement. A symphony of circuits, resistors, and capacitors, your printed circuit board or PCB is like an intricate puzzle where every piece has its perfect spot. Strategic component placement is paramount to creating an efficient and functional PCB layout. Imagine trying to fit a square peg into a round hole it wouldn't work, would it? The same principle applies to your PCB. Each component, from the smallest resistor to the largest microprocessor, must be placed with precision and care. Component placement is not just about fitting everything onto your PCB. It's about creating a harmonious balance between components, ensuring smooth communication between circuits, and minimizing interference. Think of it as a game of chess, where every move counts, where you place your queen the microprocessor can affect the entire game. So, consider your moves carefully. Remember, a well-planned PCB layout can save you from a world of trouble down the line. Component placement, the art of balance in your PCB layout. On to the top three with guideline number three, PCB stack up. Imagine a PCB as a multi-layered cake. Each layer or stack has a specific function and the way these layers are arranged can greatly influence your circuit's performance. Think of PCB stack up as the architecture of your circuit board. Now, why is this so crucial? Well, a properly planned PCB stack up can help achieve signal integrity and reduce electromagnetic interference. This is achieved by carefully placing signal layers next to plane layers and separating them with a core or prepreg layer. Signal integrity is all about preserving the shape and timing of signals, and a well designed stack up ensures this by minimizing crosstalk and signal loss. On the other hand, electromagnetic interference can cause havoc in your circuits. A well-planned stack-up helps keep this under control by providing shielding and a return path for currents. So remember, a well-designed PCB stack-up isn't just about aesthetics, it's about functionality and performance. PCB stack-up, the building blocks of your PCB layout. Almost there with guideline number two, signal integrity. This concept is crucial in PCB design essentially acting as the life force, the pulse, the heartbeat of your layout. When we speak of signal integrity, we're referring to the condition of an electrical signal. In an ideal world, signals would be perfect, maintaining their timing and waveform from source to destination. But alas, we don't live in a perfect world. Instead, we have to contend with issues like noise, distortion and loss of signal, which can degrade our signal integrity. These issues can be caused by numerous factors including impedance mismatches, signal reflections, crosstalk, and electromagnetic interference. So, how do we maintain signal integrity? Through careful design and layout strategies. This involves precise routing of traces, proper termination techniques, and managing impedance. Remember, a good PCB design is a balancing act. The health of your signal integrity can mean the difference between a successful project and a frustrating failure. Signal integrity, the heartbeat of your PCB layout. And finally, the number one guideline, design for manufacturability. This principle is the cornerstone of any successful PCB layout. It's all about ensuring that your design can be efficiently and cost-effectively produced. It's not enough for a design to merely work on paper or in a computer simulation. It has to be practical in the real world. Designing for manufacturability means considering factors such as the capabilities of your manufacturing equipment, 
the availability of materials, and the ease of assembly. It requires you to think about how your design will be produced on a large scale and how it will be put together. It might mean simplifying your design or choosing standard components over custom ones. It's like playing a strategic game of chess, where you're always thinking several moves ahead. You're not just designing a circuit, you're designing a process. And that's what makes the difference between a good design and a great one. Design for manufacturability, the golden rule of PCB layout. And there you have it, the top 10 guidelines for a successful PCB layout. We've explored the importance of keeping sensitive components away from high noise circuits, the use of ground planes, the prioritization of power distribution, the use of decoupling capacitors, traces routing, thermal management, component placement, PCB stack up, signal integrity, and design for manufacturability. By following these guidelines, you're well on your way to creating a top-notch PCB layout. Thank you for watching and remember, knowledge is power.